video RAM. Doesn't that sound a bit magical? Do you remember the first time you wrote numbers into a memory area of your computer and immediately saw pixels light up on the screen? To me, even after years of using modern GPUs, textures and shader code, this direct visual feedback of a CPU at work is still fascinating. But what exactly transforms a standard RAM chip to being that magical video RAM? Let's find out by building a little TTL logic around it. Let me point out that I am not an expert in this field. I usually don't do much research for existing solutions. What I enjoy most is following my own ideas and keeping my designs as simple as possible to make them really accessible and enjoyable for you to play around with too. At the end of the show, our toy will look like this. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll be needing just two breadboards for this video card itself, plus an Arduino as some kind of a dummy CPU that accesses our card. The first thing I'm going to do is to build a circuit that generates horizontal and vertical VGA sync pulses from scratch. I am planning to use the 640x480 pixels mode with 60Hz refresh rate but I will limit my resolution to 400 x 240 pixels here to make our display fit into 16K of RAM. The VGA spec states that for horizontal sync we need to fire an active negative pulse every 32 microseconds. I am planning to use a 16 MHz crystal oscillator as my pixel clock, which subdivides this scan line into 512 pixels or 64 bytes with 8 pixels each. Therefore, I'll divide the timing of a scan line into 8 bytes for the sync pulse, 4 blank bytes, 50 data bytes and another 2 blank bytes. The vertical sync pulse needs to happen every 16.7 milliseconds, that is at 60 Hz. That's about 520 of our scan lines, which quantizes the vertical timing to 2 lines for the sync pulse, 30 blank lines, 480 data lines and another 8 blank lines. Meeting the exact spec isn't too important here, since VGA monitors are built to accept some tolerances. So I've rounded some values just to make building things convenient. With that out of the way, we can merge all counting into one single 16-bit counter. The lower 6 bits for the horizontal timing and the remaining 10 upper bits for the vertical timing. Besides the oscillator, we need a 4-bit counter to subdivide the pixel clock into byte ticks. And we need two of these cascaded 8-bit counters. I'm using the 74161 and two of these 74590s here. They are pretty standard to use. First we need power and ground. At the 161 I tie the master reset and the parallel load high and feed our clock to the clock input CP and also enable counting by setting PE and TE high. At the output Q2 we can then access our 2 MHz byte counter. For the 590 I also tie its master reset inactive high for now. Chip enable and output enable active low and I feed the output of the 161 to the CPC and CPR clock inputs. Cascading is simply done by feeding the ripple carry out RCO to the chip enable of the next stage. Let's power things up and see if it works. Here we have our 16 MHz signal. And this is the uh, subdivided 2 MHz clock. And here we can see the counting action. Great! Now let's generate the H sync pulse from this. Here you can see our 16-bit counter with the LSB on the right and the MSB on the left. H sync should be low for ticks number 0 to 7 and high above and repeat itself every 64 ticks. So in other words, only if bit 3 or bit 4 or bit 5 are high, H sync should be high as well. To detect that, we can simply use these two OR gates. The vertical sync pulse is generated from the top 10 bits of our counter, counting the scan lines. First, we want to reset the counter when reaching 520. We can use a single NAND gate for this, since it goes low as soon as the 512 bit and the 8 bit go high. 
To finally generate vSync, we build a set reset latch, shown in yellow here, that is switched on when we count up to 2 and switched off again when we reach 520. All in all, we only need a 74HC00 quad NAND gate and a quad 74HC32 OR gate for this. Let's go! Ok, let's take a look at our signals with uh, my scope again. For H-Sync we have a low pulse every 32 microseconds. And for V-Sync we have a low pulse every 16.7 milliseconds. That's looking good. I feel confident enough to hook it up to my VGA monitor now. I'll feed H-Sync and V-Sync to my VGA connector but tie the pixel data to ground for now, just to see if my monitor detects our signal correctly. But be warned here, I am using a digital VGA monitor and if I mess up the signals it will just detect that. But don't experiment with a real CRT monitor shooting a real electron beam, until you are very sure what you are doing. Out of spec sync signals can make the electron beam of those devices go crazy and damage or destroy your vintage monitor. Let's power things up and see. Hmm, <clears throat> it's not working. Oh, okay. I have mixed up V-Sync and H-Sync. Let me quickly correct that. <laughs> I swear I didn't do that on purpose. And yes, that is looking great here. 640 by 480 by 60 Hz. And this is it for today. In the next episode, we'll start shifting pixel data to our monitor. Thanks a lot for following along so far. Take care. Bye.